Hello 171 class, this is your second part for your 2.7 notes. Uh, in part 1 we talked about polynomial inequalities, in part 2 we're going to talk about rational inequalities. So a rational inequality is the same thing as before, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, where um, the function that we're dealing with is a rational function, meaning a polynomial on the top and a polynomial on the bottom. So this one, 3x plus 3, 2x plus 4, we got um, a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, and then we have an x-intercept at x equals negative 1. And the greater than 0 means above the x-axis, like we talked about before with polynomial inequalities. Uh, because it's not underlined, we want it to be strictly greater than 0, so strictly above, not on. Okay, so anything in the blue is above so this is above the axis this is above the axis the little part in the reddish color is below the axis the black dot is where it's on the axis we want where it's above all right now before when it was polynomials we looked at finding the zeros because when we had the zeros that was the place where it went from being below to above but with rationals if you recall back when we studied rationals the first time back in 2.6, um, an asymptote also can be a place where we go from being above the axis to below the axis. It doesn't have to be strictly a zero anymore. So not only do we need to find the zeros of the polynomial, I mean the uh, rational function, we also have to find the vertical asymptotes. Now if you remember from 2.6, the zeros of this come from the numerator. All right, what makes this top equal to zero? Negative one does. All right, that makes it equal to zero, so we've got a dot there. What makes this uh, function have a vertical asymptote? Uh, negative two, because two times negative two plus four is zero. So x equals negative two is our vertical asymptote. Remember, we talked about that being where division by zero takes place. So that's what we have to do with these things. A, a zero of the denominator also has to be included, not just the zeros of the function itself, which come from the numerator, but the zeros of the denominator as well. All right, so let's actually do this. So let's show where this these two come from. All right now, for this method, I strongly recommend, or this type of problem, I strongly recommend using the table versus the graph. Now, you could use the graph. All right, we talked about the graph here. It's above it's above so that's that would be the solution set but I'm going to show you how to get the solution set using the table method all right so first find the values that make the numerator equal to zero all right the numerator is 3x plus 3 I set that equal to zero solve for x and I get x equals negative 1 okay and then I find the values that make the denominator equal to zero the denominator is 2x plus 4 set that equal to zero solve for x, I get x equals negative 2. All right, and then you look at the two uh, zeros, and the one that's the smaller of the two zeros gets put with negative infinity in the first region. So neg it's always going to be, the first region is going to be from negative infinity to the smaller of these two numbers. Okay, negative 2 smaller than negative 1, so negative infinity, negative 2. Always a parenthesis on negative infinity parentheses on negative 2 here because negative 2 makes the denominator 0. Okay, so it everything's going to be parentheses because this is strictly greater than, right? But what this says in blue here, use a bracket of parentheses determined by the order symbol, but for the top only. So negative 1 makes the top 0, okay, because that's a greater than and not underlined greater than or equal to, we use a parentheses for the negative 1s as well. But you always use parentheses for the zeros of the denominator because you can't divide by zero. So negative two causes division by zero. So always in parentheses for the things that make the, the bottom zero. All right, and then we always do the second region will always be from whatever number this is here, comma to the next biggest zero. So the next biggest zero is negative one. All right, if there had been a third one, we would put negative one comma to that third zero, and on and on and on. Okay, and then, but because there's not, the last region is going to be from the biggest zero, negative one comma to infinity. 
right? Always a parenthesis on infinity. This negative one gets a parenthesis because the order symbol is not underlined. All right, same way here. This negative one's getting a uh, parenthesis because this is underlined. If it was underlined, you'd have a bracket in both those places. Always a parenthesis at negative two because it's the denominator. Always a parenthesis on the uh, infinities. All right, now we're going to pick a test point from each region. So for region one, I'm going to do negative three. For region two, the only there's no whole number between here and it's your sum of these negative one and a half and then negative one to infinity I'm going to use um, zero. Alright now remember you can put these in your uh, calculator so I put in 3x plus 3 in parentheses divided by the parentheses 2x plus 4 I go to my table setup remember that's um, second window is your table set up and then go to ask mode and then you can just type in these three numbers so negative 3 negative 1.5 0 uh, this is a positive 3 so I'm going to put a plus sign this is a negative 1.5 so a minus sign and this is a positive 0.75 so that is a plus sign okay all right and then like this says right here uh, plus goes with greater than or equal to or strictly greater than we got a greater than zero those numbers that are greater than zero are positive so we want the positives so the regions that are positive are negative infinity to negative two and then negative one to infinity all right so our solutions are those two regions region one and region three in this case okay but again we could have gotten it from the graph if you understand that graphical method this is above the x-axis so from negative infinity to negative two and then from negative 2 to negative 1, we're below, but then from 1 to infinity, we're back above. So we could have gotten that same two regions from looking at the graph, but because of the way the graph calculators do vertical asymptotes and because of how they do graphs of rational functions, you can't sometimes see that it's going off towards infinity and you can't see this bottom part of this. I just strongly recommend you do um, the table method. Okay, and don't forget this little nifty trick. So remember the test menu, second math is the test menu. You have the um, order symbols underneath there. So you can put it in and then instead of just hitting graph, you can do is greater than zero. You can actually write the inequality graph and then it'll actually graph the solution set. So negative infinity to negative two, negative one to infinity. So there's my solutions. What if we have some rational inequalities, meaning we have a polynomial divided by a polynomial, but it's set greater than or equal to, in this case, some order symbol. But then on the other side, it's not zero. It's something other than zero. In this case, it's a two. All right, well, notice that our instructions, our list of instructions, even on the last problem, was once these are set equal to zero, set to zero. If they're not set to zero, got to set it to zero. You bring all the non-zero stuff to one side and then you combine all this into a single fraction so we need to combine x plus 1 over x plus 3 minus 2 all into one fraction so the first thing we're going to have to do in a problem like this is you need a common denominator you need to find your LCD so here that LCD is x plus 3 and remember what you do with that LCD once you find it is you accommodate for the two fractions having different denominators meaning you make them have the same denominator so this one didn't have a denominator so we're making it have a denominator of x plus 3 but because we altered the bottom okay that the old denominator here was 1 okay, you can write that as 2 over 1 since we multiply the bottom by x plus 3 we have to do the top by x plus 3 and then we need to distribute that minus 2 through the numerator all right and once we do that we get x plus 1 minus 2x minus 6 and then we combine that over the same common denominator so just 1x plus 3 on the bottom all right then we'll simplify the numerator x minus 2x is negative x 1 minus 6 is negative 5 then on the bottom x plus 3 okay now that we have a single fraction we can go into our work uh, for step 1 all right step 1 says find the values that make the numerator equal to 0 
All right, so the negative x minus 5 is the numerator, and if we set it equal to 0 and solve, we can just add the x over on both sides, and we get negative x equals 5, or sorry, negative 5 equals x. So there's one of my zeros. Okay, and now we find the values that make the denominator equal to 0. So x plus 3, I'm going to set that equal to 0, and that's easy enough. We just subtract the 3 over, we'll get x equals negative 3. Okay, now this is the denominator, so this is always going to get the parentheses. This is a numerator, okay, and the numerator uh, in the original thing we had a 4 equal to, so that means we'll get, use a bracket on negative 5. Brackets here, parentheses here. Now this is the smaller of the two. So when we go to the table, my first region will start at negative infinity, comma, it'll go to negative 5, because negative 5 was the smaller of the two zeros, okay. Negative 5 made the top 0, so we use a bracket on that because of, again, because of this order symbol. Okay, so a bracket. Alright, and then the next region will go from negative 5, the smaller 0, to negative 3, the next bigger 0. Um, again, oops, again, a bracket with the negative 5, a parentheses the negative 3. So a bracket with negative 5, parentheses with negative 3. All right, and then the third region will be from negative 3 to positive infinity, the biggest 0 to the uh, to infinity. All right, parentheses with negative 3 and always parentheses with the infinities. All right, test points in this region we use negative 6, in this region we use negative 4, in this re region, we use zero. I always use zero if it's available. Plugging in those numbers, I can see the negative six is used in the table. I get a negative one third, which again, all I don't care about is the sign, a negative number. If I plug in negative four, I get a positive one, so that's a positive. And when I plug in zero, I get a negative. All right. So because this is greater than or equal to zero, we want the plus. We want the positive. So we want this region as our solution. There's our solution. Negative 5 with a bracket, negative 3 with a parenthesis. That is a bracket, by the way. Negative 3 with a parenthesis. Okay. You could plug these in, get your um, uh, graph. If you just put the greater than or equal to 0 symbol right there with the test menu, graph it, you could see that this was the only region that has the elevated part of the graph or you can just use the table method however you want to do it. Right, let's look at one last example and uh, go through it step by step. So again I'm going to subtract the 2 over to get it set to 0. Get a common denominator. The common denominator here is x plus 2. Since I already have an x plus 2 and that one I don't need to do anything. Here, again, I can think of this as 2 over 1. Here, to change this from 1 to an x plus 2 on the bottom, I need to multiply the top and bottom by x plus 2. Still less than or equal to 0. Okay, so x minus 2, and then this is going to be a minus 2 times x, so minus 2x minus 2 times positive 2 would be a minus 4 all over x plus 2, the common denominator, less than or equal to 0. All right, combine like terms, x minus 2x is negative x again. Minus 2 minus 4 is minus 6. All right, that over x plus 2. So that's a simplified fraction, a single fraction. And once I'm there, I'm ready to do uh, the steps that we talked about here. Okay. All right, so the first step is to set your top and your bottom equal to zero. So x minus six equals zero, x plus two equals zero. Add x over, and I get negative six equals x. Subtract two, get x equals negative two. So there's my boundary points. Okay. Notice that 2 makes the denominator equal 0, so this one's going to get parentheses. 
negative 6 is what makes the top equal to 0. And because this is or equal to, we'll get a bracket on the top here. All right. Negative 6 is the smaller of these two. So the first region will be negative infinity to negative 6. The second region will go between the two. So negative 6 to negative 2. Bracket on negative 6. Parentheses on negative 2. And then the third region will be the bigger zero to infinity. Okay, parentheses on both because I always went on print on uh, infinity. Negative two made the bottom zero, so it gets parentheses always as well. All right, my test points. I'm going to use negative seven um, here. I can use negative three, negative four. I'm going to use negative four, and then anytime I can use zero, I'll use zero. All right, plugging in this into my calculator and using these test points, negative 7 makes a negative number. I'll put a negative there. Negative 4 makes a positive one, so I'll put a plus there. And then 0 makes for a negative number, so I'll put a negative there. Okay, and then if you, again, if you look over here, we have less than 0, so that means we want negatives. So we want two negative regions. So there's one, there's the other. So negative infinity to negative six with a bracket. Okay, again, because of the order symbol, union negative two to infinity with parentheses, negative two makes the denominator zero, so it always gets a parentheses. Okay, you gotta get that down. Only the order symbol determines the, the um, brackets and parentheses for the top only, for the numerator only. Okay, so always parentheses for the denominator zeros. Okay, cannot divide by zero for any reason.